<laughs> guys i did it i finished top five in the world and if you're wondering why i'm talking so quietly right now is because it's 5 a.m right now that i'm currently recording this video and i wanted to record it and get it out before the maintenance break starts and you can't watch the replays anymore because if you guys know when the season ends there's a maintenance break that starts usually a few hours later to add the update and then you can't watch the replays so my parents are sleeping right now i need to talk really quietly but guys i'm so happy i can't believe i actually did it um because this season wasn't actually going amazing for me i ended up tilting um but i recovered really really nicely um but I switched my deck to Sparky because when you when I got higher up towards the top, um, like the top 100, there's a ton of like decks that Sparky did good against, and Royal Hogs were just not good because everyone else was using Sparky. So I had to switch my deck. So this is the match. The first one I want to show you guys is the match that actually got me to um, to fifth in the world. It was a really really intense one um show you guys it right now but yeah i hope you guys can can hear me all right because as i said i kind of need to whisper i can't talk very loud right now um but i wonder if it almost sounds like asmr <laughs> but yeah i can't um can't talk loud at all but guys i'm so happy i'm really happy the um hard work has been paying off for me um with, while we're in quarantine right now and I haven't had school for the last You know month or so I really feel like I've been able to put in more time into the game and this is only the start We have like five months. I, I don't go back to school for like another three four months at least so I feel like this is only the start. I think there's more to come like I think I might be able within the next couple seasons to get a top three finish hopefully but yeah i wish i could talk so much louder because it's hard to talk quietly when you're so excited but um yeah i don't really have a choice but you can see the start of this game was pretty dicey our cycle got a little bit messed up and he actually has a pretty good matchup faust here faust is a really good player but he he has a pretty good matchup here because our Earthquake doesn't get a lot of value in this match, and his Rage is really, really annoying. It allows the Sparky to shoot faster, just overall more annoying to deal with his support cards. So you can see Sparky ends up, my Sparky ends up taking out his push. I don't know why he didn't zap my tower in the Sparky. I think that was a little bit of a mistake on his end, because had he zapped, um, he would have taken the tower so that was quite interesting on his end he's gonna go really aggressive here um i honestly think the nerves kind of got to Faust in this match i think honestly he choked the game because he was doing so well um but i think part of playing last hour of the season and being really high up you need to have you you need to kind of what's it called you have to make sure you're focusing the whole match, not making mistakes. Now, obviously, if you're really nervous, you're going to be making mistakes. So that's what I'm anticipating. Like, Faust kind of felt in this match. I think he was a bit nervous because he kind of choked. He played the zap too late. You're going to see, I think he even soon goes in like with an angry face. He knows he messed up. But, yeah, we, he screwed up really, really badly, and I would say we kind of lucked out on this one because, as I've already said, this is a pretty difficult matchup just because his Rage gets like more value than the Earthquake, and he also has Heal Spirit for a slightly faster cycle. But you can see he's really, really upset. That was the match that ended up getting me to 5th um, in the world, which is 81-51. Um, but yeah, fifth, I was so happy to get it. I really just wanted a top five finish. It would have been nice to get like fourth or third, but my best um, my best finish before this was sixth. So I was just overall extremely happy when I got a top five. You can see though, I was so close to getting a top four. If I had just one more trophy, that would have been insane. Um, but let's go to the replay in this next match. This next match was really, really intense. Like it was actually, 
it was actually really close you guys are about to see um and once again i hope i hope my voice is loud enough i, I really do um and if it is a little quiet then i'm sorry there's not too much i can do <laughs> but okay so things are pretty slow here to start off this game speed it up and then he just starts with minor bats so i go minions and I apply a little pressure with the Dark Prince here because what I want to do is kind of force a lot of Elixir out of him. I ignore the one wall breaker on the left lane. I don't really care about that getting damage. I go Musketeer. I don't want to Sparky yet because had I gone Sparky in the back, he would have pressured me. Don't think it would have been a good idea. But I do zap the Bar Barrel because I don't want it to get damage on my tower. And then, I don't catch the Miner, but Mini Pack is enough, because it takes out the Miner, so the bats aren't even being tanked for. And this, in my opinion, was a pretty bad Musketeer. Um, not necessarily a bad Musketeer, but bad Wall Breakers. He just spent 6 Elixir, so that Mini Pack got so much value. And you're about to see, now we're going to get into kind of like a um, Tower Trade situation. So... Like, I knew I was guaranteed to take his left tower if he dropped a Magonite in the right lane, and that's what he decided to do. So I basically just unloaded on the left here, because I knew there was no way he was defending the left lane. But at the same time, I knew minions weren't going to be enough to stop that, so we get ourselves into a two-tower game. And, you know, I would say in this situation, things could go either way. I feel like neither... His deck or mine really has the edge in a two tower game. I really feel like it could, as I've already just said, it really could go either way. In fact, it might even be a little bit harder for me because he can go for Mega Knights anywhere on the map when I go for a Sparky. So that's why I play my Spark in the left lane. I don't want to play it in the right because he could just play his Mega Knight right on top of it since he's able to play the Mega Knight anywhere he wants in the right lane since he has the right tower taken out. So Musketeer is locked on my King Tower, I eventually play a mini P.E.K.K.A, but by the time I do, he's already dealt so much damage to my King Tower, so things were not looking too good going into the final couple minutes of this game. But, I go Dark Prince, and I get ready to Sparky, um, and it was kind of unfortunate that that one Wall Breaker connected. That actually made this game really close, closer than it had to be, um, I don't know why. I let that wall breaker connect. Now, this might have been a little bit of a bad play on his end. When he went Mega Knight on top of that, he basically used up all of his elixir. His zap was out of rotation. Sparky was guaranteed to get a lot of value here. You're going to see I finally go for Sparky on the right lane rather than the left lane. Great time to do it. Zap is out of cycle. And really interesting bats on his end. Zap those easily. And he lets the miner die. And just like that, things are looking pretty good for us. We're even on Elixir, we have a Sparky on the map, and we can just... Um, we're basically going for the King Tower now, because he had to spend so much Elixir on that Sparky. So, I knew he wasn't going to have enough to defend this. Just go Zap on the Bats, and I, at this point in time, didn't know we were going to 3-crown him, but I knew it was in my best interest... Uh, interest to keep the pressure up because this was going to prevent him from going in for like a push on our own king tower and i knew we were going to get some damage but i didn't realize we were going to end up getting the win so we end up pretty much getting a nice win there versus i would say it's a relatively even matchup um like he has zapped or set the sparky magonites i feel like pretty good versus um versus sparky in general but maybe it's actually slightly my favor because he does have the mini P.E.K.K.A variant, whereas if he had the Bandit variant, like Bandit instead of mini P.E.K.K.A, I definitely think it would be his matchup because Bandit's really good versus Sparky as well. So, two really nice wins there. Um, and not much in his deck is getting a nerf. Same with um, my deck, the really the only two cards that are getting nerfed is the Earthquake and the mini P.E.K.K.A. And mini P.E.K.K.A. I still think is going to be very strong. And the other thing is I feel like um, Earthquake is still going to be viable as well because it's going to do, do more damage to towers now. It's also going to one-tick skeletons, making it a viable counter to 
uh, graveyard because it's getting a slight damage increase. It's just doing less damage to buildings. Okay, so next one I want to show you guys is versus a Royal Hog deck. Royal Hogs, um, I feel like we're really popular in this meta. This is part of the reason why I switched to Sparky because Sparky is really, really good versus Royal Hogs. So you're just going to see Thomas here is going to have a really hard time um, breaking through and it's just, it's really rough for him. So, we're just kind of taking things slow here. We don't want to Sparky until he gives us Sparky value. And after he played the Musky in the Goblin Hut, I kind of knew at this point that it either had to be Graveyard or a Royal Hog deck. And then after the Heal Spirit, I knew at this point it 100% had to be Royal Hogs. So, I wasn't cycling my mini, or excuse me, my Sparky, same lane as that Musketeer. So, notice what I do here. I ignore the minions, and here's why. Because he just went in for Royal Hogs, minions, and he also snowballed on the right lane. That's 10 elixir that he invested. So, I was able to afford taking some damage here because I essentially knew I was going to take his tower. There's no way he was going to stop this push. We have a Sparky on the map. We're both even on elixir. So... Like a Sparky 6 Elixir, how in the world is he going to stop this? There's no way. So I just go Goblin Giant in front here. Minions behind his Snowball's not a cycle as well, so minions just get so much value here. Um, but honestly, I'm not going to lie, this was a really, really solid defense on his end. I was expecting to basically deal a lot of damage to his King Tower too, but he managed to defend this really nicely and even save the tower, which was really impressive because I honestly thought that we were going to take the tower easily and like maybe even take half his king tower but that musketeer he placed it so well so it killed um the barbarians and the sparky and then ended up finishing off the goblin giant he played it in a perfect position um but obviously we're in a great situation right here we are up one tower going into double elixir and you're gonna see instead of defending this I just go Sparky behind the King Tower. I guess that kind of is defending a little bit because it's making sure he doesn't 3-crown us, but I'm sacking my tower here. I know after these rural hogs, he's low on Elixir, and once again, we can just build up another push and overwhelm him. So that's exactly what I do here. I just let the rural hogs do their thing, take my tower, and that's going to be it. Um, like, I mean, at this point, he's just in such a bad position. That Goblin Giant was a little bit of a mistake on my end. It probably should have been one or two tiles lower because you can see it's getting really far away from the sparky which is not what you want you want them to stay close together so that was definitely a small mistake on my end um if i were to play this over again i definitely would have played the sparky or the goblin giant sorry guys i'm, I'm a little tired it's 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 five in the morning right now for me <laughs> so i might not be um explaining everything perfectly but um, like, as I've already said, we're just in a great spot. We're pretty much guaranteed to win at this point. Um, it's pretty much impossible for him to stop our Sparky pushes. And he goes for another Goblin Hut. That's another Earthquake for me. And, um, like, at this point, we're just basically taking the slow. And Goblin Giant ends up getting one connection. So all we really need to do is cycle an Earthquake in his zap, and that's going to finish it off. So Earthquake, and then I just cycle minions, zap his tower, and as I've already said, that's a really, really tough matchup for him. Um, he honestly played that, I would say, pretty much as well as he could have. Um, I don't think he made any really noticeable mistakes, it's just, it's nearly impossible for him. So, I do manage to lose a game here, and you guys are probably looking at this like, how did you lose this? Um, to be honest, I don't know. And if you don't know who this is, this is Igor. Um, he played so well. I actually think I'm going to show this loss because I think it's important to show losses and kind of like, you know, see what you could have done differently. But I'm just going to say he, he kind of played this amazing. Like I was, I don't know how he won it either. Um, but here's what I want to do. I want to show um, a replay versus Graveyard. Graveyard was another really popular deck. And then after I show this replay, I'll show the one versus Igor. He managed to finish second in the world last season. Um, great player. He has multiple number one finishes as well. 
So he starts with Goblin Hunt. I, at this point, didn't know for sure it was Graveyard. Could have been Real Hogs. Could have been Lava Hound. But I knew it was one of, you know, a couple things. And in, at this point in the match, playing Sparky, you know, is pretty safe. Because keep in mind, um, when you play an Earthquake on a Goblin Hut, that's a 3 for 5 trade. So you're going to be up to Elixir. Now, this was a little bit interesting. I don't know why he cycled an Ice Wizard in the right lane rather than in the left lane. Maybe the reason why he did that is because he didn't want to get my Sparky value. But I still think it would have been better to play it in the left lane. But I'm not really sure. But he decided to cycle it into the right lane for whatever reason. Now, this is a very important tip with Sparky. I see a lot of people do this. They always, um, they go really aggressive early on. Like, a lot of Sparky players would play the Goblin Giant in front of the Sparky at this point. And that is not what you want to do. Because see the baby dragon there? And he also has grave Graveyard and Cycle. Be such, such an easy defense for him. So what do I do instead? I go opposite lane. See the Dark Prince? That I already cycled, same lane as the Ice Wizard. So, when he cycles the Bar Barrel here, I know he has to drop a Knight. So I get a Mini P.E.K.K.A. down to as quick as I possibly can. So I go Goblin Giant, I go Mini P.E.K.K.A. I know his only option is to either go for a defensive graveyard or play a Knight, and he opts to go for a Knight. So, that's going to be only 3 Elixir, but then when he cycles his, you know, Goblin Hut, by this point he has nothing, he has no more Elixir. Plays his Ice Wizard, and that's all of it. So I zap the Spear Goblins that come out. Mini Pekka gets the job done on top of the Ice Wizard, and then I apply pressure with minions because I had a feeling he was gonna tornado. I mean, why wouldn't he tornado in that situation? Because if he didn't, his tower would have been down. So with him having no elixir and with all that stuff tanking on his king tower, I knew these minions were gonna get a lot of damage because he had no elixir. I knew he didn't have enough for a baby dragon. He didn't even have enough for a bar barrel. I didn't know it this when I was in this match that he didn't have enough for a bar barrel because it's hard to keep track of the exact elixir, but I knew he for sure didn't have enough for Baby Dragon. So just like that, we're off to a fantastic start going into double elixir. So let's speed it up here um, because pretty much the rest of this game was mostly just defending, but um, I actually played a high goblin giant. Um, that was a little bit of a mistake. The reason why I did that is because I was predicting a graveyard, and I didn't want the baby dragon to tank, but he didn't end up going for a graveyard, so obviously was not the best goblin giant, but um, it doesn't end up costing us the game, which is pretty good. So we just go Sparky. Um, this is another tip. When you're using Sparky, you don't want to play Sparky behind your king tower or too low because then they'll go for a graveyard to distract your Sparky. You want to make sure you're playing it pretty high up in the middle, so it can take it can take out whatever you want in this instance it's in the night and had i played the sparky a little bit lower um the he probably would have went for graveyard and tried to um save the knight and then have a tank down for the graveyard the knight would have tanked for the graveyard and my tower would have potentially i potentially would have lost my tower so that's why it's important to go for high sparkies again you see the same thing goes for a graveyard Minions just get the job done so nicely, taking out those Graveyard Skeletons, and just like that, we end up winning versus this Graveyard deck. I versed another um, Graveyard deck. I don't think I want to show that replay because, first of all, it's the same deck, and we both waited until Triple Elixir, so, like, well, no, not triple, but, like, double. We both waited a really long time. Um, so, here's what I want to do. I want to show... Um, I want to show, I, I actually want to watch this one versus Igor, um, and then I want to show the one versus Air Surfer. So, actually guys, I, this is kind of ironic, um, me and Igor are kind of, I wouldn't necessarily say we're good friends, but we both know each other, um, and like, I, I actually saw him at the, um, at the World Finals. The, the CRL World Finals because I went there. Um, it, the the ones that were in the the one that was in LA. I went there. That was uh, I think a few months ago. Um, but yeah, basically, I actually DM'd him on Twitter and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I lost that matchup. And he was like, 
Your only mistake was that you waited until double elixir. He told me that I should have made a mood move in single elixir, which I thought was kind of weird because Sparky, um, usually I would think does better versus cycle decks in single, but I actually, to be honest, knew he was either using mortar or a fast cycle deck, so I guess it would have been okay to cycle probably a musketeer or a dark prince, and I actually, to be honest, was really confused why he was waiting till double, because I thought with fast cycle you always want to make the first move, but Igor honestly is just insane at this game, and you're gonna see from this replay, like, I didn't make too many mistakes this match, um, but he just played it uh, phenomenally, so now we have some action starting up here, um, his miner doesn't get much damage, but because he has his miner out of rotation, I go for Sparky in the back, and you're gonna see he immediately pressures the opposite lane with Skeleton Barrel and Bats, and that's a 5 elixir investment, and I defend it for 3, so at this point I was like, okay, this is pretty good for us, how is he going to defend our Sparky, I can just Earthquake the Bomb Tower, and that's what I do, I Earthquake the Bomb Tower, I go for Mini Pekka because I know he's going to go for Knight, so I want to take that out as quick as possible, but you're going to see really, really flawless defense on his end, I honestly don't even know what to say, um, and this was also insane. I'm up like 5 elixir right here, and I go for another Sparky in the back, and he still somehow defends this, like watch. He's just insane, honestly. So I go for another Sparky in the back, once again, he goes Skeleton Barrel, Spear Grab Wounds, so I, this might have been a small mistake on my end, I maybe should have gone in for minions instead of the Musketeer, because minions are 3 elixir, Muskies 4, but... I felt like if I played minions, the Spear Goblins would have taken out like one or two of them, so I thought Musketeer was the better play, but might have not been. We'll have to, s like, let me watch this over again and see. Mm hmm. Might have, might have been the, the better better play to go for minions, but I, I can't believe he defended this. I, I can't believe it, guys. So, I go for an Earthquake on the Bomb Tower, obviously. And since the poison's about to expire, I go for minions. And even right now, things still aren't looking good for him, but he goes for a skeleton barrel to tank. It kind of kills everything. He gets so much value out of it. I zap it. And just like that, he somehow defended and wins this matchup, which in my opinion is a really, really, really easy matchup for me. Um, it's actually pretty insane. So... Yeah, he just logs, I try to catch, you know, with the Goblin Giant that doesn't, you know, do anything, obviously, and that's it. Igor won, um, and as I said, he finished second in the world last season. Um, but yeah, let me show you, this, this This will show you how easy of a matchup it is. Let's put this on 4 times speed, I just want to show you this fairly easy win versus Air Surfer. Now, he did have the Wall Breakers, which might have made this matchup a little bit. A little bit better for me, I'm not really sure, because I feel like wall breakers, I can let the wall breakers connect to my tower, but the skeleton barrel is something I have to address, because that takes out, like, I think more than half of my tower, whereas the wall breakers only take out about a third of your tower if you ignore them, so it's not as bad. And honestly, Air Surfer played this really, really well. There's just not much he can do, and this is why I was really surprised that Igor somehow won versus me. And I think after messaging him on Twitter, I think he's right. The only reason why I lost was because I didn't make a move in single. Because, I, I don't know, maybe I just had to get the right cycle going, fix my cycle in single, so then in double, would have had an easier time overwhelming him, but I'm not really sure. You see Air Surfer here laughing. Um, honestly, I don't blame him. It's just a pretty pretty tough matchup for him. Um, I think it's like pretty much nearly impossible for him to win. So I just cycle here end up getting the three crown versus air surfer so yeah really really um great season guys i'm i'm honestly really proud of myself um i'm glad the hard work has been paying off but i'm not done um i want to see if i can get a top three finish in these next few months i even want to potentially see if i can get a number one finish um because i just have so much time to play the game I have online school right now, but on my online school for me will end in like a month or two, and then after that we have like our two month summer break, um, which I won't have school, any online classes, and I'll just have so much time to play. So I'm super excited, I want to see what I can do, um, and 
next year when I finished high school, when I when I finish high school, I really want to play CRL. So this is kind of like a good chance for me to prove that like I'm CRL level. Um, is these next few months during quarantine. So yeah, that's gonna be it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, again, like I'm really sorry that um, I I'm talking really quietly right now. My my parents would be pretty upset with me if I woke them up and my room is upstairs um, and their room is too um, like down the hallway so they can hear me if I'm too loud but yeah make sure to like the video if you guys enjoyed it subscribe if you're not subscribed already and yeah guys I just I can't believe it um today has just been an incredible incredible day um I went from being tilted to like finishing fifth in the world so yeah it really shows you just never give up um, keep working hard, grinding, and it really does pay off. So, yeah, that's going to be it. Um, thanks again. Until next time, guys.